Hi everybody, Doug Hippie again with another EAC Product Development Solutions Tip of the Week video. Today we're just going to look at a very simple mechanism, but there's a couple of things that I want to highlight during looking at this mechanism. If you take a look at the screen right now, I'm going to pull this angle pin up and you'll notice that my the body of my component is moving as I move that angle pin. Okay? Now you'll notice that as the pin leaves the hole, the body stops. So this is a mechanism here that uses collision or it uses push upon collision. So let's take a look at how I've done that. I'm just going to uh, dissect this mechanism as opposed to uh, assembling the mechanism so it will assume that you have the ability to create a mechanism. But we'll take a look at what I've got here and we'll look at a little bit at the anatomy of this mechanism. So as we go over to the placement panel here, you'll notice that I ha actually have two planar connections here. I've got my first planar connection, and uh, that first planar connection are a couple of datum planes. Keep in mind, best practices, use those datum planes for primary references. But I do not have any translations established for this. Those have been left empty. So let's go over to the second mechanism or the second connection that I've created. This connection is actually on the bottom side of this block, orange block that you see here, and then the top of this plate. You can see that by the highlights in cyan color. Okay, now that connection also does have some translation uh, axes information in it. The first one I left blank. And if you look at the little glyph down in the graphics window here, You'll notice that as I highlight the translation axis over in the dashboard, it shows you in red the arrow of which that translation axis is relative to. When I pick on this second translation axis, you'll notice that the red arrow now goes to the back. I've set limits here so that it goes to zero, and when I regenerate my, con my component, enable that regeneration, it comes back to this zero location but I've also given it a maximum limit of 1.75. So let me show you how that works, okay? So now I can either go in and say, let's drag components, pick on a component, and then push that component back. That component is only gonna go 1.75 during that drag, okay? That's what that limit has established. Now when I wanna get back to my original orientation, original location, I can just regenerate my model and it pushes everything back into its original location, original orientation. Now the key element here though is to have this push upon collision. In other words, when I get contact, I want to have this thing push. So let's take a look at a cross section here and how that works. So I'm just going to zoom in a little bit here and then we're going to pull on that cross section. You'll notice that there's a gap on the back side here. So as I select to drag my component, and I pick on that component, I've got no contact yet. As soon as I hit collision, it starts to move. Okay, so that's the highlight that I want to show so that everybody is aware of what's happening. Now, as I push back and as soon as that pin comes out, there is no longer any collision, so the slide that I have set there stops. All right, so let's go back and then we'll turn off our cross section, go back to reality. Now let me show you where you set that so this will work. You go over here into the prepare, so select file in your tab and prepare and then model properties. If you're using Wildfire 5, the selection is edit and then properties. Within those properties, you'll see that uh, down at the bottom here is collision detection. I have it set for partial detection. And what I've done with that partial detection is I've just selected the angle pin and then that body right there for my collision detection. The other thing that I've highlighted is down the bottom you'll see optional settings. The optional settings has a command here for pushing objects on collision. That's what I have set here so that as these things move and progress up it moves that back and then as soon as there's no more contact on it it'll allow other components that have connections to it continue but it, the ones that are not being uh, contacted anymore will stop. Now there is a config option that you need to set in order to see these optional settings. And we're going to take a look at that right now. Close out the properties in Creo Parametric. Get to my config options by selecting the file tab and then selecting options. And then I'm just going to go into the configuration editor. Now, instead of just adding this, you can select find to add it. 
and it's enable advance whoops and I'm just gonna type in a portion of it and say let's uh, search, search my descriptions and here it is enable advanced collision and that enables that advanced collision setting so if you go to do your collision push and you look in that model properties and you don't see any option there for that advanced selection go into your config options and select enable advanced collision and set that so that it's yes by default it's set to no select as yes select add change and then of course don't forget to export that configuration or save your config.pro so that you have access to that that's my tip of the week this week if you'd like to learn more about mechanisms there's several areas you can go you can go out to PTC's community at planet PTC you can also if you've invested in e-learning there's a complete section and module that's relative to mechanisms and of course if you want uh, EAC to give a little help with something reach out to your friendly EAC account manager and ask them for more information on mechanisms and tell them that you saw Doug Hippie show it on a tip of the week. This is Doug Hippie from EAC Product Development Solutions signing off once again from a tip of the week. Have a great week everybody.